Good evening. I'd like to call to order this meeting of April the 11th, 2016 of the Columbus Municipal School District. At this time, we'd like to ask for Reverend Morris Thompson of the St. Paul's Episcopal Church to come with the invocation for tonight. Welcome. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in the beginning you created us to have dominion over your world to look after your earth, to care for all the creatures within it. And Lord, when you came to reveal yourself to us by becoming one of us, you told us that none of your creation was more precious, more treasurable than your children. You have given us charge over them. We thank you for this authority. We ask that you bless this board with insight and integrity, that they may serve your children with wisdom, that their decisions may reflect what is right and good. We ask that you bless our teachers with enthusiasm and care so that our children may come to school excited to learn day after day. We ask that you bless our parents with patience and love, that our children may be nurtured in homes full of encouragement and support. Finally, we ask that you bless our children with ambition so that they may learn how to succeed in this world. And when they fail, as we all do, bless them with a resolve to not give up. We ask all these things through the one who never gave up, gave up on us, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Thompson. Thank you. Will we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, Board, we do have a quorum, so we are able to move forward with conducting business tonight. That brings us now to open forum. We do have one person who has signed up for open forum, Ms. Mona Vance Ali from the Columbus Public Library Archives. Welcome. Hi. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Mona Vance Ali, and I am with the Columbus Lounge Public Library. I'm the archivist there. And I am here before you all today um, because we had discussed several months ago the transferring of historically significant documents from the Columbus City School um, central offices over to the archives and at that time we had discussed having an inventory created and afterwards that inventory was created and therefore sent to you all and I'm here today to answer any questions that you might have about the inventory and also to get that approved so that we can move forward with actually transferring those documents to the archives. All right board do we have any questions? I do. I have one. Mrs. Fisher? Thank you very much, Ms. Vance, for all of the work that you, you've done and everything that you've um, defeated in terms of all that dust <laughs> and those historical documents. It's I did have challenge. one question regarding um, copies of things. I think I mentioned to the board when this was first proposed um, that I wanted to know whether or not we had backup copies of certain documents where they're unique and there's only one copy available. Now, you're asking if I know whether you have copies? No. If, if we if, should make copies? Yes. Um, I mean, we can do that. It mm -hmm. depends on the document and mm -hmm. specifically which documents you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that digital copies could be made. Yeah. Um, it could be that photocopies could be made. It just depends on the specific record that you might be interested in. Okay, but was, was there any planning for anything to be done um, that way? And, and if you would, tell the public how they're being maintained and why you're doing this project. Well, um, we have a vault at the public library, and it's temperature controlled. Um, and it, we also maintain um, specific uh, rigors such as no light. Um, we also have only staff is allowed back there. Um, so there's a lot of preservation methods that we actually have put in place. We also have security cameras, and so um, no one is actually allowed back there unless we're open and staff is available. 
Um, now that also means that other methods that we um, institute are acid-free folders, um, mylar sleeves for photographs. So there's a lot of preservation tools and um, supplies that we order that are not just things that you say, for example, buy at Walmart. <laughs> um, these are specialized supplies. Um, and so we invest in the care and management of these materials to make them available to the public. Anybody can come in and access these records um, at any time that we're open. Um, we also are working with the Mississippi Digital Library to put things digitally available online so that people from all over the world will have access to this information instead of having to physically come to our building. Um, the amazing, amazement of the digital age. So um, we're very lucky in that sense. But um, so as far as copies, a lot of times what we do is actually put things on microfilm. Um, I know that sounds like a very antiquated method, but we actually know that uh, microfilm will last over 100 years if kept in the right conditions. Um, whereas I don't know how many of you use a floppy disk these days, but no. not very many. No. <laughs> Right, right, what is that? <laughs> um, so technology changes so fast that we want to put it on a, a, a tool that will actually be accessible. Um, even if I don't have a microfilm machine, I can still take out the roll of film and see it and project it if I needed to. So a floppy disk is just a great coaster unless you have a machine to actually view that information. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. Um, we try to be pretty choosy about what records end up on microfilm. Um, but that is a method that we use, um, especially right now. We're working on doing that with our newspapers. So that may be a long answer for you. Sorry. Very good answer. Board, do we have other questions? No other questions? So when we get to the point in our meeting, board, we have to take that up. We do know, Mr. Dunn, that this is a legal um, transference of documents to to the library, so, so we know we can legally do it, uh, but we will take that up, um, because I don't think we ever voted to do it. We didn't vote, so we'll, we'll take that up, and then we'll let you know what the outcome is. All right. All right, thank you for coming. Thank you so Have very much. Board, that now brings us to item number five, which is the adoption of the agenda, and after hearing uh, from Ms. Vance Ali, we do need to amend our agenda to add that as an item for consideration to approve. So we can probably just place it underneath item number seven, and we can make it F under seven. That will be page number three in our agenda. So we would put the Columbus. And that's after the rock collection yeah. display. Right, so okay. that's, it's right mm -hmm. after E. And then also board, we have tonight a presentation being made for our annual audit, which is being made by uh, Ms. Megan St. Clair, the CPA who, who has been responsible for the audit. And she's travel, have, having to travel a great distance to get back to her home, maybe three or four hours. So if it is a pleasure of the board, we can move that up in our agenda and not have it at the end of our agenda. If that's the case, then we will make that item number G under letter G under item seven as well. So we will be pulling that from section 11, Office of the Business Management where you would see letter A, the presentation of the CMSD audit results. I was looking at the paper copy of the agenda and it doesn't quite match. And so I was lost on the Ms. Vance issue. Would you please repeat where we're placing? Sure, we're gonna place that underneath item number seven, which is under the <coughs> office of the superintendent. And we will make that letter E, well F, F is in Frank. It will come right underneath the rock collection. Okay. And then the, the next item will be item G, which is the presentation of the CMSD annual fiscal year ending 2015 audit. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. So, board, if there aren't any other changes. Madam President, there is just one other change. Yes. Uh, with respect to, uh, let's see here, let me get it back up here. Under the staff personnel, 
under recommendations number three. I ask that that be removed from consideration tonight. Would, Madam President, would you ask him to repeat what he just said as yes. far as location? Uh, Mr. Spears, would you yes. repeat that? Yes, under the I'm staff looking. personnel recommendations tonight, I ask that number three listed under recommendations uh, be removed from tonight's consent agenda. I mean, from uh, tonight's agenda for consideration. Okay, so you're actually on the personnel agenda. Correct. Item number three. Correct. Under resignations? Uh, recommendations. Under recommendations? Yes, it's number three, Frederick Hill, Principal Columbus High. I ask that that be removed from tonight. Okay, Mr. Spears, um, we, will pro we probably should take that as a, as a vote for that one um, because it's not just a standard kind of request, if that's the pleasure of the board. Okay, do you see it, Mr. Spears? I'll make a motion that we remove number three from recommendations. So Mr. Spears has made the motion to remove uh, that item uh, from the personnel agenda. Is there a second? The motion does die for lack of a second. We didn't call for it. You got to call three times. Is there a second? Okay, it has been motioned I'll and second. second. It has been motioned by Mr. Spears. It has been seconded by Mrs. Shoemake. Is there a discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, the candidate being proposed for um, was not brought to the board for consideration at our last meeting that we had Wednesday. It was an add on after our last meeting. And so. Uh, once it appeared, I, of course, do as I do every time and started researching it. Um, this particular individual being presented uh, has numerous problems that would be brought to our district. One uh, being the fact is that he uh, basically uh, was run out of Natchez School District uh, based off the fact is that he was uh, bullying personnel. And this is not the court of public opinion. This was in September of 2015. A judgment by, by um, the courts said that he uh, discriminated against other personnel. And that was uh, proven in a court of law, not Jason's opinion. And I just think that it would be very bad for our school district to bring this individual into the district. Hey, man. Actually, Dr. He, Hickman. Yeah, actually, he was a uh, superintendent of Natchez. And if, if you... Um, dig a little bit more, what they found out was that he was unjustly terminated. And so they're going through litigation with that, with this position. But it wasn't because he was uh, sued for discrimination of, of the employee. Actually, the school district was. She had filed the complaint before the, the three years that he was there um, as superintendent. And so well, what he was found guilty of was the end result because he fired the, her as a principal. And just in, in to um, reiterate the point is that why would they have teachers, administrators, parents, even the NAACP protest this individual continuing to run their district when their district continued to fail to go from a D to an F and ask repeatedly, and it's not just one or two people or a faction of people, it was a community-wide effort uh, to have this individual removed because of the chaos and the problems that he brought into the school district. And he, I just, he actually brought the district from a, a F to a D, and it was going to a C. And uh, so that I don't know where you got that from. Uh, it's very documented. So as I would I say, know. if it was removed tonight, we could certainly review it further. Since it was not allowed to be reviewed at the Wednesday meeting when we did our review, it was added after the fact. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Spears, the entire personnel agenda was added after the fact. It was all in red for our review meeting, okay. if you recall. Well, here, here's, here's what's the harm in the fact is that if we are so set on really knowing whether this person can lead the high school, he wouldn't start until July 1st anyway. So Dr. Hickman, in terms of contractual agreements um, with administrators and teachers, uh, what is the, the deadline that we're working with? The deadline we're working with was in order to, I mean, we did a lot of interviews in order to get the, the best candidate. And so every candidate that we had, and he was one of our top three, 
the rest were quickly snatched up. Um, and so when we also worked with him, I also make sure that I talked to uh, his school district and they did say that they're independent, that it, it actually was founded that he was wrongfully terminated as superintendent. I mean, he was just given a, an extension, a three-year contract. And so, but we're hiring him as a principal and, and his principal record is, is, is flawless. The, the superintendency is more political in nature. Absolutely. Board, what other discussion do we have? Dr. Shumate? Mrs. Fisher? I, actually, I don't see anything wrong with delaying a little bit, just so we have a chance to talk more about it. And so typically the way that this works um, is the recommendation is made to the board and the board receives the recommendation. I mean, it's worked that way for the last three years and the board takes it up and we either vote it up or we vote it down. I don't know what other contemplation the board can have over this. I don't know what other, it's not the mission of the board to do fact finding ventures. That's not what we do. So. Well, Madam President, then I ask that if that be the case, that we separate it as its own item and vote on it separately. From so the are person, you, staff personnel agenda. So we already have a motion and a second on, on the table right now. So are you withdrawing your motion? I withdraw my motion. So Ms. Uh, Shoemaker, are you withdrawing I'll, your second? I withdraw my second. Okay, so now we're starting back um, from the very beginning. And I make my motion that we um, have this as its own separate item uh, under staff personnel recommendation. And I'll second that. Okay, so it has been motioned by Mr. Spears and second by Mrs. Shoemaker that we list that item and it is item number three okay. under recommendations. It is item number three under recommendations <laughs> on the personnel agenda that it be listed as a separate item. All in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. Please let the record show that Mr. Spears and Ms. Shoemaker are in favor. All opposed, please signify by raising your right hand. Please let the record show that Verdell and Fisher are in opposition and the motion fails. So board, now we're back at the beginning of our agenda needing to approve the agenda so that we can move forward to conduct business. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'm, I'm motion that we approve the agenda with the recommendations um, that have been made regarding the two changes of placement of items. So the motion has been made by Mrs. Fisher. Is there a second? Verdell will make the second. Discussion. All in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. Please let the record show that Verdell and Fisher are in favor. All opposed, please signify with your right hand. Please let the record show that Mr. Spears and Ms. Shoemaker are in opposition. So the motion to adopt the agenda to move forward with business um, does fail. And so that means that we're not able to conduct any business tonight. So Mr. Dunn, in light of that, how do we then uh, just, do we move forward through any of this without making any um, decisions or do we just uh, adjourn the meeting? If there's no agenda, I don't think that you can go forward with the meeting. So I would just call at this time for an adjournment of this meeting, please. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. It has been motioned by Mr. Spears. Is there a second? So moved. Second by Mrs. Fisher. Any discussion? All in favor signify with your right hand. It is unanimous. The meeting is adjourned.